Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna go through joint movements. Now, the first thing we need to start off with is that different types of joints in the body have different degrees of freedom when it comes to their joint motion. And there's only three axes in which a joint can move in. If a joint moves in one axis, it's called uniaxial. If it's two axes, it's called biaxial. And if it's three, it's multiaxial. And the different gross movements that a joint can perform have different names which I've written up on the board and we're going to go through them one by one. But before we begin, you need to understand something called the anatomical position because when we refer to each of these types of joint movements, we always have the anatomical position in mind. And this is the anatomical position where we've got feet shoulder width apart, eyes facing forward, arms by the side, palms facing forward as well like this. This is the anatomical position. Keep that in mind as we go through these particular types of joint movement. Abduction. Abduction is the first one. What does it mean if somebody's been abducted? It means they've been taken away. That's all abduction means. It means take away from the body or take away from the midline of the body. So abduction of the arm, abduction of the leg. That's abduction. You can also have abduction of the fingers. Again, anatomical position, abduction of the fingers. Then when we look at adduction, this is bringing back toward the body, back toward the midline. So you can have adduction of the arm. You can have adduction of the leg. And you can have adduction of the fingers again. When we look at the next point, flexion. Generally speaking, when we say flexion, we're referring about decreasing or minimizing the joint angle. That's what we're usually referring to when it comes to flexion. So if we use this definition, you can have flexion at the shoulder joint, flexion at the elbow joint, flexion at the hip joint, and flexion at the knee joint. Now you may ask, what about flexion at the ankle? This is where it gets a bit iffy because True biomechanical definition of flexion is the approximation of ventral surfaces across a transverse axis. And you may be thinking, what does that mean? It's a ridiculous definition, but what we highlight there is ventral surfaces. And when we look at the foot, the dorsal aspect of the foot is actually the top of the foot. So when you flex that foot to minimize that angle, in actual fact, you could define that as extension in a strange way if we go by the biomechanical definition. So we don't use flexion and extension per se when we look at the foot. What we use is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. And so dorsiflexion is where we bring that foot or the toes up towards the top of the body. That's dorsiflexion, pointing the toes upwards. And plantar flexion is pointing the toes down towards the ground. The way I remember that is if you're planting something in the ground, plantar flexion, pointing the toes down towards the ground. Plantar flexion. All right. Then we can look at extension. So again, generally extension is increasing or maximizing the angle at the joint. So let's go through those joints again. We've got shoulder extension. We've got elbow extension. We've got hip extension. And we've got knee extension. You can see that I've put the, the prefix hyper there. So you can have hyperflexion and hyperextension. And this is simply highlighting the fact that when you flex beyond that joint angle and when you extend beyond that joint angle, that's what we're referring to as hyperflexion and hyperextension respectively. Now, circumduction. This is moving the joint in a circle around its axis. So, Usually what we're talking about here are ball and socket joints, right? So the hip and shoulder predominantly. Uh, when we look at the shoulder, right? Circumduction, moving around in a circle. Circumduction for the hip, moving around in a circle. Really important. Now, you may be thinking, how is circumduction different to rotation? The difference is circumduction is in a circle. Rotation isn't necessarily in a circle. It's just moving within the confines of that axial plane. So circumduction, if you were to put a pen at the joint and put it on a piece of paper, it would draw a circle. With rotation, if you were to put a pen at the joint, it would just draw a dot or a line. And so the different types of rotation you can have, for example, are internal rotation. So think about the shoulder. You can have internal rotation. You can have external rotation. You can have internal external rotation at the hip as well. So you've got internal rotation, external rotation. Then we've got inversion and eversion. So 
This can sometimes be confused, particularly when we're referring to the foot. Inversion, eversion, pronation, supination. It's a bit tricky and difficult. If we refer to the foot to begin with, inversion is where the foot is pointing inward. Inversion, so inversion. Eversion is putting the weight on the outside of the foot. So inversion, putting the weight on the inside of the foot. Eversion, putting the weight on the outside of the foot. Pronation and supination is where, for example, you've got the palms or your forearms facing upward. That's supination. Pronation facing downward. And you can think about this when we refer to a patient as well. If they're laying prone, they're going to be on their back. If they're laying supine, they're going, uh, if they're laying prone, they're going to be on their front, sorry. If they're supine, they're going to be on their back. The way I remember this is supination, soup. If you wanted some soup, you have palms upwards, right? Soup. Supination, pronation. So this is a really quick run through of the different types of joint movements.